All right, guys, we are answering more of your questions on this hot Tuesday. Tuesday. <laughs> All right, ready? What You're should we thinking start of with? something to yes. come up with, like yes. to start out with, aren't you? Yeah. Something well, you want to mess with me about. Um, see it. Vanessa got mad at me today because uh, I tried to do the laundry, except I put the whites in with the colors. Do you guys remember how old you were when your parents taught you that when you do laundry, well, you can separate I just say, the colors from the whites? And um, also, I've talked to you about this before. <laughs> my, my, I actually never learned how to do laundry. This was actually a thing when I got married. Yeah. Um, I was 29 years old, and uh, my mom always did the laundry for me, so I didn't know anything about laundry. Uh, and then after my divorce, when I moved in with someone I found on Craigslist, I had no idea how to run a dishwasher. So I put regular soap detergent into the um, dishwashing machine, and then when he came home, it was flooded with suds. Uh, luckily, he thought that was adorable, but um, yeah, these are just skills that I never learned. You did learn just later, because you know now. Well, I know now, but you know, um, washing whites and colors and stuff like that, it's not something that um, is ingrained in me. It's something I have to consciously think about. And also, um, you said when the pile got high, I could wash it, and the pile got high, so I just threw everything in. We separate our whites from our colors, right guys? Everybody knows that? Yeah, okay. My, by the way, all my whites are now pink. That's why my frustration. The other day, I gave Vanessa a choice. I said, hey, do you want me to, because the baby was down, I said, do you want me to um, pretend like I'm a stranger and I'm going to have my way with you? Or do you want me to make eye contact and make passionate love? And her reply was, let's just take a nap. <laughs> that was your reply, let's just take a nap. <laughs> I said, just cuddle with me. Just hold me and let's take a nap. That's All right, let's get to your questions. <laughs> okay, we're looking at them now. There's a bunch of them. Pick a question, any question. Uh, let's see. Okay, this is an interesting one because I think that there's a lot of different opinions about this one, and I have very strong opinions about this topic. Do you, well, I have strong opinions about everything. Do you express to your partner when you find the other person in the vicinity, when you find another person in the vicinity attractive? Oh, this is a great question. Um, oh, what, what do you think of this? Because I, uh, this actually has happened to us a few times. Um, Vanessa thinking someone's attractive and pounding it into my head. <laughs> oh God. Um, yeah, what do you think about this? I... I don't know. It's hard. I, I have empathy for people who struggle with jealousy. It's not something I struggle with. So I have always been very open to... Well, let me ask you this. What's threatening to you? Not that I find someone attractive. That's not threatening to no. you. But wouldn't uh, me connecting to someone emotionally be more of a threat to you? Like, let's say I had a friend and, and she was female. I mean, I guess. I don't know. I don't... The word threat wouldn't even come to mind. I don't mm -hmm. think in those terms when it comes to that yeah. um, topic because... I just, it's very hard for me to connect to feelings of jealousy. That's not right or wrong. It's probably most likely a defense mechanism of mine, to be quite honest. Um, but it's just not something I go to easily or quickly. Um, but as right. far as just like commenting on somebody being attractive, that actually does nothing for me. Like it doesn't bother me in the least. And as a matter of fact, I've always been the person to do that. And by the way, I do it with both sexes. It doesn't actually matter to me, a man or woman. I'm always very much like, wow, that woman's beautiful. Or like, you know, oh wow, that guy's, you know, attractive or whatever it is. But, um, I think that there is a humanness in the realization that we are all going to be attracted to other people and to think yes. that we're not is kind of silly. But I think there's a difference between, you know, um, saying it in passing, right? Oh, right. that guy's hot or look at right. his whatever or her whatever that's attractive, admiring, you know, like if a right. horse drives by, that's very different than, than constantly telling your partner um, that you have a crush on someone um, maybe well, especially it's somebody real. I don't think celebrities, even to me, that doesn't do anything because a celebrity, it's like, I mean, you know how yeah, I feel yeah, about yeah. David Bowie. Granted, he's not alive anymore, but, yeah. you know, we have this joking thing about, like, who's your let, right? Like, who would be your let if you were to be allowed to have sex with one person and it wouldn't affect the relationship at all? Like, who is your let? Well, there's something about a celebrity because it's not, like, right. it's, no, you know, no it's one's... not realistic. Yeah, you guys aren't going to go off into the sunset, right? Uh that's more of a fantasy. Right. Now, where I think it does get dangerous is if you find 
someone in your circle of friends and you could find them attractive but if it keeps coming up and it's like oh yeah i find your friend hot or like you know or something like that continuing to bring it, it up yeah where it becomes more than just observing someone who is um attractive or has an attractive quality but now it's about you uh, having a fantasy a longing you know something like that i think that can be dangerous i think there's a responsibility with that i think we're all humans and here's the thing if you think that your boyfriend or girlfriend husband or wife only um, finds you attractive and no one else you're incomplete that's not true complete denial yeah so it's better to accept that yes they are going to be attracted to other people but they're choosing to be with you so there's two things i want to say based on what you just said first and foremost i also think fantasy is completely normal yeah like if i'm if i find somebody in your friend group or somebody that i work with or like the guy at the grocery store or coffee shop or whatever attractive it is very likely that at some point i'm gonna fantasize about them just like you're gonna fantasize about another woman like that's very common sure fantasizing about people who are not your partner is 100 percent normal by the way you guys when, when are you fantasizing about them doesn't matter when it could be during sex also very normal mm. like this is very normal behavior you can laugh. Don't make a joke out of it. Like I want to, I want to normalize this for people because people think that there's something wrong with them if they're fantasizing. Like I must not be into this person anymore. Something's wrong with our relationship. There's a lot of stigma around this topic, and it's actually from a, like a sex psychology perspective, 100% normal. It is normal. It's hard to hear, and I'm, I'm, it is hard I, to I'm hear. not laughing because it's funny. I think I'm laughing because I'm, I got kind of uncomfortable thinking about you fantasizing say about um a friend of mine or someone that we know while you and i are making love mm-hmm. which and that's fair i mean it's fair to feel that right it's not, it's something i didn't really haven't thought about yeah um, and i think as therapists it's our job to kind of normalize for people this kind of stuff and reflect these normal feelings like you're having yeah i mean if if your partner says to you they've never masturbated thinking about someone else and maybe that someone else is someone that is in your circle of friends that's not true because they probably have, probably have right? right? Um, also, we dream about people that right. we don't have control over. We wake up and we have crushes, um, harmless crushes on people that we may not even be that attracted to. It's right. just being human. Right? So now that's the second thing I wanted to bring up, though, is that I do, even though I'm saying to you I'm the kind of person where you telling me that you think somebody's attractive or hot or even a celebrity, like, literally does nothing to me. Like, it does not bother me in the least. There is a difference between that and what you said earlier about continually saying it or continually bringing it up because then what I want to know is... Because you're not being sensitive. Right. Then what I want to know is like, is there a motivation behind the fact that this person continually brings it up about the same person? Um, Because that to me feels insensitive. It feels unkind. It feels like you're kind of poke or trying to dig. And I want to know about that. Right. And also you you have to uh, take into consideration if your partner... Um, may struggle with jealousy, may be insecure. Sure. Uh, and also the, the person that you bring up, are you bringing that person up as kind of the island to swim to, meaning, you know, uh, kind of subtly controlling, like, like, like let's say the person that you bring up has your ideal body and you keep mentioning to your uh, girlfriend that, oh, look, that's I really attractive. I love her butt. Look at, she's so hot. Yeah, and yeah. if you're doing it in a way where you're trying to control or get your girlfriend to go into the gym and this is how you're doing it it's manipulative then it's it can can be manipulative if you say um uh out of conversation oh yeah your friend is like she's attractive it's just a fact i think she's attractive and i don't Um, think i should have to keep i don't i i don't think i should have to monitor what i'm saying around you all the time to the point where i'm like i can't ever say that somebody's attractive because it might hurt your feelings right it's like i think it is important to know intent but i also think it's important for the person who struggles with jealousy to also understand that a lot of the work is theirs too yeah and i gotta say as someone who's 48 um i'm I tend to be less of a jealous person. Like if Vanessa tells like me, now uh, when you were younger. yeah, you know, and, and Vanessa says all the time, like she thinks this person's hot or that person's hot. Uh, it doesn't bother me. Um, when I was 20 something, it would have bothered me. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think some of it just has to do with age. You I know, remember, uh, you know, a personal story. I remember when I was like, I guess late twenties um, with my ex and he had had a really bad ending of a relationship that, you know, involved cheating and she, you know, broke his heart, all the things. And I had a very, very, still have a very, very close 
male friend of mine that he had just been introduced to. He was kind of just getting into the friend group at the time. And he told me he was very kind of insecure about our relationship. And I remember the conversation very well. And I remember saying to him, I'm very sorry for what you went through. Um, but my relationship with this person was this way before you came into my life, right? He's very close to me and I plan on keeping it that way. Um, and while I'm, I'm here to listen and I can be empathetic, I'm, I'm not her and I don't want to be responsible for paying for her mistakes. So, you know, the jealousy and security thing, like that's a little bit on you to work through and come to me and talk to me about it, but, but also it's yours to own. Yeah, and you know, there's also with culture, um, I can't speak of all their cultures, but I know um, 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 in the Korean culture, especially old school, there's a lot of um, machismo. Mm. There's a lot of like, you're my girl and you sure. shouldn't look at anyone well, else. American and, cultures. Right, yeah. all of that. And so that I think also plays a part. And so I think it's important just to be aware. Yeah. Um, I think that. Have conversations. Yeah, and I think jealousy is. Um, and we all struggle with it to a certain point, right? And I like what Vanessa said. She said, well, I'm not really jealous, but maybe that's a defense, right? Maybe for her. I've read that about jealousy. That's something, that's a new concept to me that I'm, I'm yeah. exploring. Like maybe it's not, I mean, I think you are a secure person, but maybe it's not only that, but maybe it is a way of, of defending. Cutting off, um, yeah. because yeah, she's so like not jealous, it's kind of strange, right? Um, it's not jealousy that's unhealthy, it's the behavior, right? right? We're all human, we can be jealous, you know, um, don't deny it, uh, look at it. But if you are, because of your jealousy, being controlling or, or explosive. explosive, reactive, mm -hmm. um, putting a lot of shoulds on your partner, then that's unhealthy. Um, that can be poison in your relationship. So, hey guys, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, because we're going over time, I'm gonna turn the Instagram off. Uh, you can catch the rest of this on our podcast. It's not me, it's you. And uh, thanks for hanging out.